know what the number one mistake I see people making on keto is? Want to know why you're probably not losing weight? Tune into this video and I'm going to tell you why. And yeah, I'm going to make you wait to figure out what the mistake is. Tune in to learn more. Hey everybody, I am Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, confidence coach, serial entrepreneur, and most recently, keto convert. That's right, keto convert. I went keto, actually it's been a little bit longer than I realized, it just, time has flown when you're having fun and losing weight. Um, I went keto way back in June of 2021, so we're coming up on two years, and I did so at the urging of my functional medicine doctor. And I was very skeptical, didn't wanna go keto. I thought it was the biggest joke diet in the world, like probably many of you. Um, but I went keto and ended up ultimately losing 30 pounds and 36 inches. And it was certainly something that has been absolutely life-changing for me. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I see as the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they go keto because a, not only do I have my own experience in going keto, and there are things that I figured out when I was kind of, you know, testing and tweaking what was gonna work and not work, you know, in the early days of my keto experience, but I now coach other women and help them lose weight on keto, uh, both working with them one-on-one, -on -one, and I also have a heavy plug uh, online keto boot camp course that teaches people how to go keto uh, using my method, my approach, which is a little bit more flexible, a little bit more easygoing, um, and I've seen the same types of mistakes over and over again. So in this video, I'm gonna share it with you. Let's get started. Hey everybody, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed by hitting the subscribe button and also make sure you hit that cute little bell so that you are notified every time we put a new video out. You know you don't wanna miss a thing. Take 27. Okay, so what is the number one mistake or probably one of the top three mistakes I see people making on keto? It's this. And honestly, I see people making this same mistake. I've probably talked about this in videos. I'm sure I have on this channel in past years. And that's this, ignoring calories. Now, this is probably also very ironic that I'm talking about counting calories and the importance of being in a calorie deficit because I caught so much shit for talking about calorie deficit in another video where I was saying sometimes being just being in a caloric deficit isn't going to be enough for some people like myself and others who have insulin resistance problems. And I'll give you some context for that and then I'm gonna get back into you know why this is so important and, and why this is and, and why and how you focus on it when you're on keto and and um, how it's going to be so effective for you why it doesn't have to be so complicated but when i was talking about uh caloric deficit in the context of of keto and why sometimes caloric deficit alone isn't going to be enough and I caught so much shit for it. It was specifically in a TikTok video um, that, you know, ironically, you know, like most people, a lot of the content that I post on Instagram, I will post a similar or maybe just like one version of it on Instagram, a similar version of it or a shorter version of it on TikTok and then a short, short version of it in shorts on YouTube. Um, because I have different audiences everywhere. The people that follow me on TikTok typically aren't following me here on YouTube. The people that follow me here on YouTube typically aren't reading my blog. The people that read my blog typically aren't going over here on YouTube. The, tip the people that um, you know uh, follow me on Instagram, they're typically not you know checking out my stuff on Facebook. So I make sure that I put you know the same content or different versions of it on all of these different platforms. However, TikTok is a minefield of psychopaths. Um, every social media platform has them. I certainly have no shortage of them here on YouTube. People that love to criticize you for everything. Um, there are just no shortage of anonymous trolls that spend their entire days online criticizing people. Um, and that seems to be what gives them joy and, you know, it, it provides me with 
good entertainment and a good chuckle here and there. Um, especially, I think what makes me laugh the most is their screen name is, is it's always anonymous, the people that are the most critical of you. Um, and the fact that they're always like, their screen name is like, EB775 underscore 544ZZ5 or some really stupid name and then their, their you know, avatar is like a wolf or a bike or something you know, like really moronic like that. So this video on TikTok uh, where I was talking about the fact that I was tired of seeing trainers bash keto or bash other things and say, look, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. Eat what you want, just count calories. And I take issue with that because for years, I was in a caloric deficit and I wasn't losing weight, even though I was counting and managing all of my macros um, and working out six days a week with a trainer. I was working with a functional doctor, still am, taking my hormones, taking all of my supplements. Um, I was eating 1600 calories a day, you know, making sure I was getting, I think, 100 grams of, I think at the time I was around, I'm estimating here, 100 grams of protein, 75 grams of fat, 100 grams of carbs. I think I was around there. That's based on memory. So if those don't add up, don't shoot me. Um, but I was obsessive about trying to follow all the rules to lose weight and I could not lose weight. And for all of the hater psychopaths who go, oh, well, you must have just been cheating and eating in the closet. Guess what? Ask my husband who was around me 24 seven, okay? I was not eating in secret. I was not binging. He was around me 24 seven and watched and was witness to everything that we ate together. So um, he knows what I was eating and how much I was trying so hard. Um, and I certainly, you know, did I never go to the, Am I gonna say that I never went like after a leg day? I've talked about binging and I'll link down below. You know, I certainly went through periods during those years where I would binge and I would go to, you know, I'd work out really hard with my trainer at Gold's Gym and I'd be, you know, um, oh my God, it's leg day, I'm gonna go get a donut. Instead of getting a donut, I'd get, you know, a dozen donuts and eat like eight of them, eight glazed donuts was my thing. I'd eat them in the car on the way home and then I'd throw away the package because I didn't want anybody to know about it. And then because I'd add it up in my head, eight, eight donuts times 200 calories is 1600 calories. Okay, I've just hit my window. You know, I'd like fasted until then, and I'd, I, that's all I had to eat today. So then I would tell myself, okay, well, I'm just gonna do a 24 hour fast until tomorrow. And then I would add on, I just had a hard workout with Blaine, my trainer at the gym, and I'd add on a 45 minute extra hard cardio workout when I got home. So I would do stupid things like that. So sure, I did dumb things like that, but was I quadruple eating and not reporting it? And there was just some dumbass people who were like that they they want an explanation for why their calories in calories out argument doesn't work well guess what if you actually do some reading and some research and maybe talk to people like my functional medicine doctor among hundreds of thousands well, maybe it's not hundreds of thousands but it's not like there's just one person on the planet who's talking about this theory, right? There's plenty of published authors out there, PhDs, people with exceptional uh, backgrounds and, and you know, I, I certainly much more um, credentials than I. I'm just a person who's talking about their research. I'm just your average Joe. However, I'm also an average Joe who has, is living, walking, breathing proof of the fact that before, I was consuming 1600 calories with kind of a balanced macro uh, situation of protein, carbs, and fats. And then when my functional medicine doctor, my new functional medicine doctor said, here's what's gonna work for you. We've gotta focus on your inflammation and your insulin resistance. That's what's going to help you lose weight. Your body has literally forgotten how to release fat. And she explained it for me. I think I recorded the call. Um, I don't know how to better articulate or explain the way she did. But she said, if we get your inflammation down, we adjust your hormones a little bit more, I think we can address your insulin resistance with, with the keto. And she didn't say keto, she just get, told me, you know, follow these macros. 
grams. And when I saw that it was 50 grams of carbs or less at 1600 calories, you know, and just fill up the rest with, you know, protein and healthy fats, I'm like, isn't this keto? I mean, like the last thing I wanted to do, the last thing on the planet I wanted to do was go keto. If you talked to me two years ago, a little over two years ago, and, I, and asked me to go keto, I would have laughed. I would have made fun of it, like a lot of you. I was skeptical. I thought it was a joke diet. I thought it was the diet that you did when you weren't serious. Um, all the things that people are skeptical about keto, I was skeptical about keto. Luckily, I got over my skepticism, trusted my doctor, because at the same calories that I was before, not able to lose any weight, I was 30 pounds. I didn't know how much I was overweight because I refused to weigh myself. I was terrified of the scale. But I was inevitably, ultimately, 30 pounds overweight because over here, switched to keto, 1600 calories, same exact calories, I lost 36 inches and 30 pounds. I've stayed keto for, I stayed keto for a year and four months. And then the end of last year, uh, we started um, at the urging of my doctor because I was starting to train hard again. Um, but also because she said, it's not a good idea to be 100% keto forever. We'll be talking about that in the future videos. Um, she said, we really gotta start adding carbs back into your life. And I was, I was okay with it. At first I was very reluctant, very scared to add carbs back in. Then we started slowly adding them back in. She warned me, she's like, you gotta get ready. You're gonna gain at least seven to nine, maybe 10 pounds. I'm like, okay. And I did, I gained, I gained, uh, I didn't realize it until I weighed myself probably about a month later, uh, but I had gained 10 pounds. Um, and it was hard, that was hard for me to see on the scale. Um, I don't necessarily think I felt like when I saw it in myself that I gained 10 pounds, but it was more of a mind fuck, if you will. Um, and then after that, I really, towards the end of last year, um, I was going through a, uh, a legal situation, high stress situation, and I was very distracted with a lot of stuff in my life. And I really just decided to, at the urging of my therapist, at the urging of my lawyer, um, like take it easy with life. Start, stop pushing yourself so hard with your business. Stop pushing yourself so hard with your fitness. Like I wanted to go really hardcore, go on a diet and, and, and lose weight. And I was kind of starting to obsess about it again. And my husband and my therapist and my lawyer and everybody I'm, was like, it's the holidays, why don't you just take it easy? Why don't you give yourself a break for once? And I finally listened and I took a break and I enjoyed um, carbs with moderation in my caloric window. And I gained, I think I, well, I know I did. I gained some more weight. I wasn't weighing myself, but here's the bottom line. When I turned the corner on January, I still remember exactly what it was, is we went to go, we were invited for dinner at our neighbor's house. Um, and I went to go put on one of my favorite pairs of jeans and they were very tight on me. And I hadn't had any clothes be tight on me in over a year and a half. All of my clothes had been very loose on me. In fact, that's why I'm selling half my clothes on Poshmark. Um, so that was my big wake up call to say, adding carbs back into my life and not being some version of keto doesn't work for me. In addition, I had, once I had added carbs back into my life, I got, and I did a whole video on this, I'm gonna link it down below, about adding carbs back into my life, I got massive stomach problems. So I am now back to keto. I've been keto, I think, 10 weeks now. Um, I failed to take my measurements last week, prop, due to all the puppy issues. I've talked to you guys about um, babysitting puppies, getting a new puppy. I've missed taking my measurements, I think, what, at least one week, maybe two. But I've been keto now for 10 weeks. I know the last time I took my measurements, I was eight weeks in, if I'm correct. I will go look and I'll, I'll put the, the info down below. Um, but I've already lost 10, 10 inches um, and I'm gonna start weighing myself again. And I should be back to my goal weight or my, excuse me, my original weight, um, I'm thinking um, in another month. Um, Cause again, I'm trying to do my weight loss exactly the way I did it before, which is about at the rate of like a pound a week, um, which was for me just fine. I'd rather do it slow and steady and permanent versus fast and then, you know, you're worried about stuff. But that's making point number one 
about the caloric deficit. And I want you to know what I'm referencing when I say that because when I, when I talk about the irony of talking about in this video caloric deficit, that's what I'm referring to. So I still maintain my point that caloric deficit, we're gonna talk about in this video, when you are starting your journey, when you're starting your weight loss journey, no matter what, and it always will be, uh, a baseline, you've got to focus on caloric deficit. However, if you end up in a place like I did, where you're in a caloric deficit, you're working out, you're eating right, and you're not losing weight, then you might be in this bracket of people like me who has insulin resistance issues. And in that case, if you haven't been doing keto and low carb, it would probably make a lot of sense for you and you don't need to talk to me about it. Certainly, you might want to check out Heavy Plug coming up. You might want to check out uh, some of my products. I've got a free keto quick start guide. All of this stuff is linked down below. Um, I've got a keto cookbook. I've got an online course for just $99 that teaches you how to do keto the way I do it. I also do private coaching. Um, every woman that I've coached, I usually just work with women. Um, every woman that I've coached, I basically teach women how to do keto the way that I do it because it's a lot more flexible, a lot more easygoing than so many other people that do keto. A lot of people do keto pretty hardcore and do things that aren't necessary, like go super low carb. I did 50 grams of carbs. Most people, a lot of people do 20 grams of carbs. Don't think they need to. Um, people focus on dumb, dumb things that, I don't want to say they prohibit weight loss, but will impede weight loss like eating a lot of fake foods and doing net carbs. I talk about these in past videos and so on and so forth. But again, if you're in that subset of people who's been doing caloric deficit, working out, and you're not losing weight, if you're a woman, you're, you're age 30 plus, you're probably dealing with some hormone issues, you're probably dealing with some insulin resistance issues, it would behoove you to get your blood work done. It would behoove you to connect with a functional medicine doctor. Um, I have a functional medicine doctor, my functional medicine doctor in Austin, Texas, who takes telemedicine patients. She would love to help you. I have probably referred to her more than 30 women. She's amazing, but you can find one on your own. You can also do research on keto and insulin resistance on your own. When you, when you start doing research and you understand what the keto way of eating is, you realize that it really addresses the problem with insulin and glucose problems so naturally and that's why it works so effectively. But back to in closing, why calories still count when you're on keto. You, if you're on keto now, you may or may not have heard. And if you're on paleo or if you've gone vegan or any other form of diet, you might have heard this a phrase like, well, just go keto and you don't have to count calories. Just eat clean, you don't have to count calories. Just go, you know, just buy all organic whole foods and you'll never have to worry about calories. Just eat reasonable portion sizes, you don't have to count calories. Just just use, you know, portion sizes like this, you don't have to count calories. Um, don't, just don't snack and you don't have to count calories. Um, you know, just go paleo, you don't have to count calories. That's bullshit. And that's where people get really lost because when people go keto in particular, there are a lot of people who go keto who have a significant, this is probably true about any diet approach, they have a lot of weight to lose and they probably still have a sizable appetite. So when they start going keto, somebody tells them they don't have to count calories, but they can eat all the cheeseburgers they want. And they can have all the cheese they want and all the pork rinds they want. And they can have all the salami and hot dogs and whatever. And then they go to the grocery store. And this is the other mistake I see people eat, doing. They go to the grocery store and they buy carb smart ice cream. And then they're buying all of these different keto cookies and keto, you know, this, and they're buying, you know, uh, tubs of keto, you know, like this kind of whipped cream that's, I mean, the ingredients list alone may, it will give you a heart attack. And then they're mixing in like sugar-free jello and, and this kind of pudding and they're adding caramel drizzling on the top and they're saying, oh, it just satisfies my sweet tooth. They're spending all their time trying to satisfy their sweet tooth. And then they're saying, oh, I ate the whole tub. 
If you look at how many calories are in the whole tub, they probably consume 2000 calories because they're adding chocolate chips, they're adding caramel drizzle, they're doing this. So I'm covering actually several simultaneous things here, which is number one, and, and these are two separate topics, but these are two of my top things that are, are mistakes people make. Not counting calories and obsessing over your sweet tooth. If you don't count your calories, and you think you can eat all you want, you're in the wrong mindset. If you're focusing on satisfying your sweet tooth and you're going and buying all of these ice creams and muffin mixes and pancakes and whatever, you're in the wrong mindset and you're defeating the whole purpose of what keto is so wonderful. Keto can absolutely completely change your appetite, completely change your cravings, completely change the way you look at food. It changed it for me. I used to be somebody, go watch the video down below where I talk about how I used to binge all the time, how I used to obsess about food all the time, how I used to think about what am I gonna eat next? I used to think about dessert. I used to, every single time my husband and I sat down to watch food, watch food, watch TV at night, all I was thinking about is what's, what snack am I gonna make for us? What, what kind of cookie dough am I gonna make that we're gonna eat out of the pan? What can I sneak away and, and eat? Um, I'm hearing my dogs running around. It's a little scary because I don't know what they're doing and it's raining out and I'm just wondering if they're getting up on the couch. Um, I really did. I used to obsess about food all, all the time. And even my husband will tell you that. He's like, before you went keto, you were a snackaholic. You snacked all the time. I never snack now. Um, I had cravings all the time. I never have cravings now. And I will say this as a caveat, The key to this, and this is what I teach in my class, in my online keto bootcamp class, it's also what I teach when I work with women one-on-one -on, -one on coaching, because it's not like magic. It's not like, oh, just go keto and do keto anyway, and your cravings will be gone. I don't, I don't wanna mislead you. For me, what really worked, and some people you know, roll their eyes because they have a bad attitude about things, but people have a bad attitude about things that they're skeptical about. And people are typically skeptical about things when they're judgmental for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So you just ignore people like that. But um, what's really, what what's, was super helpful and still is super helpful for me, and I'm a crazy advocate for it, is exogenous ketones. Um, I started taking those like the second week I went keto. I have two servings of those a day, and I will tell you those. They are not cheap. Um, I am a distributor actually for Prove It Ketones, so if you're interested in trying some, like trying a sample pack of the coffee and or the ketones, let me know. We can do, we can hook you up there or get, just get you started on a regular package. Um, they have absolutely changed my life. I am a crazy advocate for it. Most of the customers that order from me um, get to the place where they are doing just what I do. They, they do two a month. They spend a significant amount of money on them because they know what this can do. It can increase your energy, curb your appetite, crush your cravings, help you with focus. Um, you just brain clarity for lack of a better way of saying it, you know, absolute when you're, when you're working, just clear mind energy, focus. I used to have a hard crash and lose all energy about two o'clock every afternoon. Ever since I've taken my ketones um, every day, that's gone. I mean, I literally was going into my room, into my bedroom and crashing every day at two. Started taking ketones, natural energy every single day. Um, it absolutely is one of the keys to my success of helping curb my appetite and crush my cravings. Now, is that absolutely necessary to curb your appetite and crush your cravings? No. Is it a massive help? Yes. If you can't afford to put it in your budget to get the ketones, which I would, I'm gonna have to go get my dogs here shortly, then my next thing is we focus on eating real foods, staying away from trying to eat stuff to satisfy a sweet tooth. You do that, you will see your sweet tooth and your cravings become significantly more manageable. But the bottom line is, no matter what you're doing, if you're intermittent fasting, if you're not intermittent fasting on keto, if you're doing one meal a day like I am, if you're not doing one meal a day, if you have ketones, if you don't have ketones, no matter how you're doing keto, 
the amount of food that you are consuming counts. You can't just eat whatever you want as long as it's keto, as long as it's low carb and it's okay. You still have to stay in a caloric deficit, in a caloric deficit window. And that's the reason that I, I lost weight is that, I mean, honestly, what became a concern for me is that I got to the point where I, my appetite and my cravings decreased so much that I was kind of slightly concerned. I got to the point where I'm like, I have to convince myself to eat more because I really was just eating to fuel my body. Um, it's not that I stopped enjoying food, don't get me wrong, but you can really change the, your relationship with food, in my opinion, with going keto. And again, keto is not necessarily by any means something that you do for the rest of your life. What I learned with my experience in starting to add carbs the end of last year, will I be adding carbs again after I, I get back to my goal weight? Um, absolutely, I'll just do it a lot differently and with a lot more hardcore, very diligent um, and very specific and precise data tracking. Uh, measuring my weight, measuring my, uh, taking my measurements and being very specific about what carbs I add back in at what time. Um, I wasn't tracking all of that stuff. I was focused on more self-care and, and kind of keeping sane in my life and I also I knew, I knew I had gained weight and I, for the first time in my life, I gave myself a hall pass. I was like, you know what? I'm letting myself gain five or six pounds right now and I, I just knew for the first time and that was the best feeling ever was that I finally found keto. I knew that it worked and sure enough, I'm proving it to you guys now. Here I am back on keto, I've already lost 10 inches. So to finally, after years and years of struggle and not being able to have anything work, to now know that I have this thing that works as long as I work it, that's the beautiful feeling. But guys and gals, in closing, it still matters. If you're paleo, calories still count. If you're vegan, calories still count. If you are eating whole foods and eating clean, calories still count. It really does. Calories count. And if you're one of those people who's like, well, I don't wanna be spending my time counting my calories, writing everything down. What's important to you? Do you wanna be healthy? Do you wanna feel good? Do you wanna age and have more energy and look and feel better and be able to do more stuff as you get older? Or do you want to get more lethargic, more tired, more run down and look like most of the rest of America who's running around pre-diabetic and can barely walk up a flight of stairs? You know, decide what your goals are, decide what's more important to you, decide if you wanna look great naked, and decide that maybe you can make an extra effort to put in an extra five or 10 minutes of effort to count your calories a day. I think it's worth it, don't you? Hey guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But of course, I'm hooking you guys up with my keto playlist, tons of videos for you there. And I've linked down to the videos that I've referenced as well below in the comments. 